All right, this kid has done it again. Clutch Carlitos takes out Tiafo in five sets. His record is now 12 and one in five sets. And we're going to get into why that is so credible, incredible and how he said he uses that to w- keep winning these matches. It's amazing. Djokovic comes through in four sets over Fernley. We got Emma Raducanu. Remember her cooking it up, getting England into a high frenzy or Great Britain, I should say. So anyways, we're going to break it all down. We're going to go through what happened in day five. Look at the draw. This is the slice presented by Betway. Let's get into it. Okay, how you feeling? Things are happening at Wimbledon. As we've said, the seeds on the men's side are dropping. Dropping like hot flies. Update, her catch is out. Sitsa passes out. We know that. I put put a tweet out, kind of listing all the guys out. Rublev, six seeds. Her catch, seven seed. Eight, Rude, out. 11, Sitsapass, out. 17, FAA, out. And a bunch of other guys. I've seen people say there should only be 16 seeds. And I you know, kind of agree with that. I think that would make things more exciting. Um, but in general, there's a lot of carnage on the men's side. There's also a lot of familiar things where that we're seeing, like Carlitos Alcaraz being a freaking beast. I mean, what can this kid not do? A lot of people had him as the favorite coming into Wimbledon. I kind of thought, I think in my preview video, I did choose him and predict him to win the tournament. And today I woke up and I'm watching him go through this match versus Tiafo. Tiafo's playing great. And that makes sense in a way because when a guy like Tiafo is going through it, not playing great, uh, putting out quotes like losing against clowns, which is a clown thing to say when you're talking about other professional players, definitely doesn't get you any uh, love in the locker room. I feel like Tiafo can get up and find his better level when he's playing the best in the world, like Alcaraz. And he obviously did that today. Um, but as the match went on, when Carlitos, uh, when he won the... You know, when he won the third set tie, or sorry, the fourth set tiebreaker and went to the fifth set, I just had no doubt that he was going to win. And it started, you know, 1-1, one, 2-2. One, two, two. You just knew that Carlos was going to find a way to do it, and he did. So there's, it's like this weird, and I talked about it on Twitter, there's this weird feeling that when it, the match goes longer, you just feel like it's inevitable that he's going to find out a way to win. The, like I compare it to Djokovic, like prime Djokovic. When, he, when the matches went longer against the best players in the world, you just ha- felt like the chips were more stacked in his favor and i have that same feeling with alcaraz and now i'm wondering is he you know and i've talked about this before is he the most clutch player on the atp tour i think he is i think you have to give it to him right now obviously over a career's body of work you look at djokovic his tie break record his 24 majors obviously but as of the last 20 12 months carlitos has won the wimbledon final in five sets the french open final in five sets um this just this kid just gets it done in five sets. And it, you know, let's just get into it. This is a couple of quotes from his press conference. He goes, you know, he's now he's 12 to one, 12 wins, one loss in f- in five sets. And he said, they're like, how does how do you make how do you do this? How do you keep doing it? What what makes you, you know, get over the line in the fifth set? He said, quote, I feel better physically and mentally than the opponent in the fifth set. And I am playing with the stats that I've just lost one match in five sets. So he like knows the stats, obviously, and confidence, if you haven't noticed, is a massive thing in tennis. If things were different, I look at a guy like Sitsipas. He has these brutal losses in the finals and big matches where he remembers those and plays with those hanging over his head. Um, Alcaraz, for example, you know, on the other hand, plays like a beast, plays loose, plays confident when he gets to these big moments. And now you really can't, like he's done it before. He's done anything you need to ask him to do in a fifth set. He's done before. So. That was a great performance from Alcaraz. And, you know, we're going to track time as it goes along, time on court um, as this tournament goes along. It was a little bit of a longer match, but it wasn't uh, wasn't crazy. Three three hours, 50 minutes, definitely physical, but I feel like that kind of just kickstarts him for the tournament, getting going into deeper rounds. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Okay, let's talk about Djokovic versus Fernley. Djokovic goes four sets. This was yesterday uh, against... Fernley from America or from Great Britain, excuse me. Um, and that was a great that was a great performance for Jacob Fernley, who plays at Texas TCU 
go frogs. Um, and you know, he put out, you know, before the match, there was a 9% chance for him to win. And, uh, that was a pretty good turnout from Fernley, if you ask me. Takes a set, takes a third set, close fourth set, um, and he had Djokovic. He had Djokovic having to figure some things out for sure. So that is a great result from him. Djokovic able to work through a match like that is a good sign for him and his fans because if he, um, if he can't, or he's showing, you know, the knee starts to act up. That's obviously like curtains like he just can't have that so it seems like he's able to play through these matches and he's okay so going forward i think you got to think of djokovic as a complete player right now with a, you know a potential re-injury of a knee but right now his knees healed what he had done to his meniscus has worked and like fritz when he had the same thing happen to him he's able to just move on so yeah djokovic into the third round um Another funny thing from the last couple of days here at Wimbledon, Taylor Fritz. Taylor Fritz telling Archer Rinder Nets to enjoy the flight home and really just gave him that, like, look him right in the face, be like, what, bro? Gave him that business after he beat him uh, because of the comments that Rinder Nets, I guess, made before the match, talking about how it won't be a French crowd there, and so Taylor won't have to cry about that. And what he's referencing there is you can go on YouTube and watch it. Obviously, the legendary post-match celebration of Taylor Fritz at the French Open 2023 last year, where Taylor Fritz just shushed the crowd for like a solid minute after he beat Arthur Rindernetch in France. And the crowd was just on him the entire match, just going crazy. Like People wonder who has the worst or most like you know indignant, disrespectful crowd in the world. And it's obviously a toss-up between the U S open and the French open. I don't see, I don't remember that many, I, you know, there's some been some drunk incidents at the Australian open for sure. But I mean, I've seen other guys like Felix Algeli seem at the Paris masters, give the shush to the crowd and Taylor Fritz and Felix Algeli seem are like two of the quieter, nicer guys on tour who just don't just go about their business. So obviously that's the crowd and Arthur, I get him. I get it for him. I didn't actually see the interview with Arthur. So I want to say that, but, he could just be sticking up for his country and I don't even mind him, you know, talking a little trash before the match. And then I don't mind Taylor Fritz burying him after the match because that creates drama. And for Fritz, that creates better fit tennis for him. He said he's never on an interview with the tennis channel. He said he's never lost a match where someone's pissed him off before or during a match. So I would say to him, next time you play Djokovic, just find a way to tell yourself like Djokovic would that Djokovic, you know, said something mean against you or your mother and then uh, find a way to beat him. So that, anyways, that was funny. Taylor Fritz absolutely dunking on Arthur Rindernetch. And lastly, for top stories, Emma Raducanu. Remember this girl? Oh, yeah, that's right. Do you remember her? Yeah, she's into the fourth round of Wimbledon, and she has this country ready to pop off. I mean, I watched her match today against Zachary, and she played great, wins 6-2, six, 6-3, six, one in an hour and a half. She's running around dinking forehand, backhand, up the line, cross court, playing with that game that we saw when she won the U.S. Open, which is just great. And the fact that she hasn't been able to keep it up since then is a shame. It's to be expected. But how old is she? Super young. And she is, yeah. We're going to look at the draw later, and we'll see her section of it. But, uh, yeah, things are, especially after the Andy Murray kind of farewell at Wimbledon, what uh, a player to put your hope on as after uh, he is back now, you know, it's kind of depressing him bowing out of Wimbledon. So we'll talk more about that later. But Andy Murray's tribute was awesome. I thought, we're running, we just talk about it now. I thought it was like, it's again, emotional. It's another one. Federer 12 final days documentary after Federer's retirement. You see Nadal struggling. You see Andy Murray bowing out. It literally feels like yesterday to me when I watched jo Federer beat Djokovic in that, sorry, Federer beat Andy Murray in the Wimbledon final. Um, and then Andy Murray go on then to win Wimbledon the next year after crying, getting choked up on the court there. That feels like yesterday to me. That was, you know, a few years into me being a tennis fan. And, uh, you know, that's like 12 years ago now, which is crazy to me. 12 years ago. I'm old. I guess I'm old. Anyways, Andy Murray will live forever as one of the biggest legends ever in the game. Uh, one of the greatest of all time, bar none. And, uh, yeah, that was a great tribute for him on the center court, uh, yesterday. Okay, let's look at the results from today. 
like we talked about Alcaraz versus Tiafo. Let's look at the stats quick. Um, the stats. Alcaraz, 16 aces. That's a lot. That's good serving. First serve in 65%. Only won 71% of his first serves. Um, but Tiafo played a great, great match. 55 winners from Alcaraz to 39 unforced errors. Like, kid is just, it's just stupid how good he is. When, uh, even when he's not playing his best, like today, the level that he can find is crazy. He said today his level is too up and down. They asked if that was Tiafo. He said, no, that's me. That's just me being up and down. Uh, still found a way to win. Don't worry about it, basically, is what he said. Raducanu beat Zachary in three sets, or sorry, two sets, straight sets, hour and a half. That's, yeah, like we said, that's that's huge. Sinner, no problem. 6 1, 6 4, 6 2 over Ketchmanovich. Thanks for coming out. Sinner just slowly moving up, you know, takes out Berrettini, takes out Ketchmanovich. He's into the fourth round. Um, yeah, he's going deep. If you didn't know, he's going deep in this tournament. Okay, Paolini uh, takes out our girl, Bianca Andrescu, 7 6 6 1. Paolini is an amazing player, if you didn't know. French Open finalists like a few weeks ago, and she's just got such a good forehand, such a good game, and she's just kind of like a little feisty beast out there. Similar to, you know, similar vibes, I would say, to Carlos Alcaraz, just flexing on everyone, being positive. Uh, she's a great player. So good win, a little bit too good for Andrescu today, uh, for sure. Dimitrov, three sets over Monfils, 6-3, 6-4, six, 6-3. Six, six, He's into the fourth round. He loves the grass. Coco Goff, 6 4 6 0, bagel on Cartel. Vekic threw. Tommy Paul threw, no problem. 6 3 6 4 6 2. Shout out to you guys for watching the interview with his coach, Brad Stein. I've been texting him, sending some of your comments, so he appreciates those. Uh, Tommy Paul loves the grass, plays great on it. Big time stuff. Kasakina, seed on the on the lady side, going down. Number 14 seed to Badoza. Sits a pass is proud. Sitsi does it, but Sitsi Pass can't get it done. But Oza's picking up the slack. That's an upset alert uh, in round three for the ladies on court three. Okay. And that is about it. Madison or Madison Keys through Navarro through. A lot of matches didn't finish because of rain. So let's just go to the draws. I think that makes sense. Starting with the men, we are in to the fourth round. We can see where. We are lined up here. Shapovalov and Ben Shelton are going to finish tomorrow. And then the winner of that will play center. I've got high hopes for Shapovalov in this match. I think if he can lock in and be like, I'm the more mature player and I'm not going to miss more than Ben Shelton, I'm going to make him miss and I'm going to play solid and use my movement and athleticism on the surface. I think he can get it done. Uh, and then playing center in the fourth round, it's just, you know, that's as big as it gets. That's as big as it gets. Dimitrov into the fourth round to play the winner of Struff versus Medvedev, which they are still locked in a battle. Uh, currently, it is 6-1, 6-3, and then Struff won the third set, and they're in 1-1 one, one in the fourth set. That is interesting. Struff is dangerous. We've said it. Everyone knows it, especially on the grass. So Medvedev trying to come through that to play Dimitrov in the fourth round. Alcaraz threw Tiafo into the fourth round to play the winner of Umber and Nakashima who are currently, Umber is up two sets to one, but Nakashima won the third set, and now they're into a tiebreaker in the fourth. So that's getting tight. That is getting tight. Tommy Paul takes up Bublik. He'll play Fonini or Bautista Agut, Musetti, Impeshi, Pericard, Rusevari. Those are great matches. Fritz versus Tabilo. That's a great match as well. Uh, that has not started yet. And a lot of these matches just have not, yeah, have not started yet. So the draw is getting smaller. Um, I guess that would be that. Sorry, that would be a. Oh, no, that's just their last. Anyways, that's the third round match. Hasn't started yet. Uh, you're right. I guess we're getting to the bottom half of the draw here. Um, so yeah, we've got Zverev. Nori, that's going to be a great match. We've got Feast versus Safulin. Ta Luca Pui, qualifier into the third round. That's pretty crazy. Um, versus Demon Hour. And then Ho Hogaruna versus Hallies. And then we've got Poprin versus Djokovic. So Poprin's got some pop in his game. And that's going to be a challenge for Djokovic in the third round. Another knee tester, as we should say. Okay. On the onto the ladies. Sviantek to play Putin Seva. Collins, Haddad, Maya, 
Para versus Ostapenko. We got Krajikova. We've got Rybaikina versus Wozniaki. That's a great matchup. Four seed Rybaikina Wozniaki took out our the last or the last remaining female, uh, or not the last remaining female. She took out Canadian Leila Fernandez in the second round. I guess that is the last remaining, or no, it wasn't. <laughs> Never mind. I'm out of sorts. Uh, Anjabur versus Fidelina. That's a great matchup. Harriet Dart versus Wang. Those are the finishing up the third round or the third round matches coming tomorrow. As we've already talked about, Radicanu through to the fourth round where she will play a qualifier in Sun. So she's, I would say, the favorite there. You never know. Sun's won matches. Uh, Radicanu was a qualifier when she won the US Open. We know that. So winning matches can help you. You're on like a, at this point, literally a, a six match win streak. Uh, so that's got to help the confidence. So if Radicana can get through there, she's into the quarterfinals to play either Bedoza or Vakic, which is another winnable match for sure, which is crazy. So soft part of the draw potentially for Radicanu. Brits, hold on to your horses. Hold on to your horses. Paulini Andrescu takes out Andrescu. She'll play Keys in the fourth round. Emma Navarro to play Coco Goff in the fourth round as well. So that is that, folks. That's a deep look at the draw remaining. The big stories. Car clutch Carlitos. Is he the most clutch player on tour right now? I think he is. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Djokovic is looking good. He's going to be tested against, against Popperin. Emma, what's up? Don't forget about me. And Taylor Fritz, absolute gangster mode um, against Rindernetsch. That was hilarious. Anyways, that's the slice presented by Betway. That's what you got to know. Leave your thoughts on the action below. And we'll see you next time here on the show.